Hello friends, in this video let us discuss about Norton's theorem. If you are preparing for exams like NET, SET, GATE and Engineering Service Examinations or if you are preparing for any competitive exams, this topic is very very important. In the previous video I have discussed about Thevenier's theorem. In this video let us talk about Norton's theorem. The topics that I am going to cover is what is the definition of Norton's theorem, what is the procedure involved in order to calculate or in order to simplify the circuit using Norton's theorem. Also we are going to discuss the three cases that is involved in Norton's and we are going to discuss the problems that is associated with the case of Norton's theorem. Let us discuss the definition of Norton's theorem. The definition of Norton's theorem and Therrenian's theorem is almost the same. The definition states what does the how does it define means in any linear bilateral network consisting of n number of voltage source current source and dependent and independent sources all these things you can replace by a single current source that current you are going to call it as Norton's current and an impedance looking at that n is called as Norton's impedance in the case of Thevenians you will be replacing by a single voltage source and that one you are going to call it as a Thevenians voltage or open circuit voltage and the impedance looking at that end is called as Thevenians impedance right but in the case of Norton's you are going to replace by a single current source that current value you are going to call it as Norton current or you are going to call it as short circuit current right and an impedance looking at that end is called as Norton's impedance make sure Thevenian's impedance is equals to Norton's impedance right how you are going to replace is you will be having a single current source and the current source value you are going to name it as IN in parallel to that you will be having an impedance the impedance you are going to call it as an Norton impedance right this is the static part of the circuit at last you are going to connect a load impedance at last you are going to connect a load impedance and if you want to find the load current simply call it as IL apply current divider rule in order to calculate IL right this is dual to your Thevenian circuit your Thevenian circuit what you will be having you will be having a single voltage source that voltage source value is VTH in series to that you will be having an impedance that is ZTH and you will be having a load impedance that load impedance you can call it as ZL right so I can tell the Thevenian circuit is dual to that of Norton circuit right that means Thevenian circuit is dual of Norton's and in the case of source transformation we have studied that practical voltage source can be replaced by a practical current source so this is my practical voltage source I can replace by a practical current source I can replace by a practical current source where IN equals to where IN equals to VTH divided by ZTH right given a problem directly you can solve using Thevenian circuit or Norton circuit based on your comfortness you can adopt any one of the procedure make sure you are going to maintain accuracy and speed you will be having a huge circuit out of that only one parameter is variable that parameter let me denote it as ZL so the entire static part that is a bilateral network how you can replace is you can replace by a single current source I can call it as Norton's current and in parallel to that you will be writing an Norton's impedance nothing but looking from this end what is the impedance you can able to see that impedance is called as Norton's impedance this Norton's impedance is equals to Thevenian's impedance as I discussed and again the load you are going to connect back and that should be in parallel. Make sure Norton's current ZTH or ZN and ZL should be connected in parallel. But in the case of Thevenian theorem, these three things were connected in series. Able to follow? Next, let us discuss the three cases. The first case is when the circuit is energized by only independent sources. Nothing but active elements, nothing but voltage source or current source, you will be having only independent sources where dependent elements will be missing. But in the second case, you will be having both a dependent source and independent sources also. But in the third case, you will be having only dependent source, you will not be having any independent sources. So these three cases I have discussed in Thevenian's theorem also. In this one also, let us consider the same problem. Whatever the answer I am getting in Thevenian's is the same answer that I will be getting even in Norton's theorem also, right? So I can make use of Norton's theorem or I can make use of Thevenian's theorem. Case 1, what it states is circuit energized by only independent sources. 
the independent sources are in the case of practical circuits you will be having a voltage source and you will be having a current source right so the entire bilateral network has i discussed i can replace by your norton's current norton's impedance and load impedance able to follow let us solve the first problem what they have given is they have given a practical voltage source which will be having an impedance of 2 ohms and 2 ohms and 4 ohms 1 ohm and load impedance is 2 ohms load resistance is 2 ohms what is the first step we have to find we have to find norton's current right in the previous case we were discussing the thevenin's voltage now let us find norton's current in order to find norton's current what is the first step what is the first step always you have to replace the load impedance by your short circuit you have to replace by your short circuit and the current that is flowing over here let me call it as norton's current let me call it as norton's current in the previous case in thevenin's theorem what you used to do is the load you are going to replace by your open circuit but here load should be replaced by your short circuit this basic difference you should know next in order to find norton's current you should know this voltage you should know the voltage over here voltage divided by resistance gives you the norton's current so you will be having two primary node one primary node is this one and the second one is over here we know that if you want to apply nodal analysis make sure one of the primary node should be treated as the least potential or ground for the other node you have to apply you have to apply nodal analysis let me call this voltage as say some vx so you have to find the value of vx so in order to find the value of vx what i am going to do is i am going to apply nodal analysis one current is flowing in this direction and the other current is flowing in this direction and other current is flowing in this direction this current is flowing from right to left nothing but it is flowing from vx to 4 so the current is voltage divided by resistance what is the effective voltage vx minus 4 divided by 4 able to follow plus what is this current this current is vx divided by 4 plus what is this current nothing but what is norton current norton current equals to vx divided by 1 which is equals to 0 which is equals to 0 let me take an lcm so i'll be getting vx minus 4 plus vx plus 4 vx which is equals to 0 so i'll be getting 6 times of vx which is equals to 4 or i can write it as vx equals to 4 by 6 or 2 by 3 volts 4 by 6 or 2 by 3 volts so this is the value of vx now what i want is i want norton current norton current is expressed as vx divided by what is the resistance that is involved that is 1 ohm which is equals to 2 by 3 amperes so i got norton's current equals to 2 by 3 amperes right so i got norton's current but what i need one more element i want norton's impedance so the impedance that is looking from this end the impedance that is looking from this end is my norton's impedance the impedance looking from this end is my Norton's impedance or Norton's resistance. So what is the circuit I will be getting is I will be having this 2 ohm and I will be having 2 ohm and 1 ohm I will be having sorry this is 4 ohm and a 4 ohm I will be having and in series to that I will be having a 1 ohm resistor. So looking from this end whatever the impedance you are seeing that is your Norton's impedance. So 2 ohm and 2 ohm is connected in series 2 ohm and 2 ohm is connected in series so that is 4 in parallel to 4 this entire combination is in series with 1 is in series with 1 so i'll be getting 2 plus 1 which is equals to 3 ohms so i'll be getting norton's impedance equals to 3 ohms which is same as my thevenin's impedance that is rth able to follow what is the final step in order to represent i need to represent norton current that is in which is equals to 2 by 3 amperes in parallel to that i have to represent norton's impedance that is rn equals to 3 ohms in parallel to it i have to represent my load impedance let me call the load impedance as 2 ohms right 
if you want to find load current if you want to find load current that is il how i can express il il equals to 2 by 3 this is my total current multiplied by let me make use of current divider rule multiplied by resistance of the other branch divided by total resistance that is 3 plus 2 able to follow so i'll be getting i'll be getting 2 divided by 5 which is equals to 0.4 amperes or 400 milli amperes so load current if you are solving with the help of Thaminian circuit or Norton circuit you will be getting the same answer so for verification purpose you can refer my Thaminian's theorem video I got IL equals to 400 milli amperes only able to follow now let us solve the next case the next case problem is you will be having both dependent and independent sources so you'll not be having only dependent you will be having even independent sources also so when you are having the dependent sources nothing but it is an active element at that time Norton's current is nothing but a short circuit current but Norton's impedance is given by Rn or Zn which is given by the open circuited voltage that is VOC divided by the short circuit current that is ISC so this case is very very important right this case is same as your Thaminian's impedance or Thaminian's resistance so what you are going to do is you have to find Norton's impedance and you have to find Norton's current and you, at last you have to fix load impedance that is Zn let us consider the same problem what is the first step is this is the load impedance that is RL so what is the first step you have to remove the load impedance and you have to replace by your short circuit and this current let me call it as a Norton current in a short circuit voltage equals to 0 so 0 0.02 times of Vx will be equals to 0 so this one entire so this entire 1.6 amperes will be flowing through this path only so I'll be getting Norton's current which is equals to 1.6 ampere Norton's current equals to 1.6 ampere but what is the value of Norton's impedance what is the value of Norton's impedance or Thaminian's impedance so in order to calculate the Norton's impedance what you have to do is what is the formula we have to first find what is the open circuit voltage divided by what is the short circuit current that is ISC the short circuit current is same as 1.6 amperes which is Norton's current only right so what is open circuit voltage in order to find open circuit voltage let me redraw the circuit this current source is 1.6 amperes in parallel to that you will be having an resistance of 100 ohms and you will be having a dependent source that is 0 0.02 times of Vx 0 0.02 times of Vx this is voltage dependent current source and this terminal you have to keep it open so this voltage is Vx so let me find this voltage as Vx so this is same as your VOC this is same as your VOC let me apply nodal analysis at this point let me apply nodal analysis at this point what you'll be getting is minus 1.6 plus what is the current that is flowing over here that is vx divided by 100 plus what is this current that is 0 0.02 times of vx which is equals to 0 which is equals to 0 so i'll be getting minus 160 plus vx plus 2 times of Vx which is equals to 0 so I'll be getting 3 Vx which is equals to 160 so I'll be getting Vx which is equals to 160 divided by 3 volts 160 divided by 3 volts this is my open circuit voltage this is my open circuit voltage let me call it as VOC so how I can find the Norton's impedance Norton's impedance is given by VOC divided by ISC what is VOC 160 divided by 3 what is short circuit current it is 1.6 right so you'll be getting 100 divided by 3 ohms which is equals to 33.33 ohms this value is same as my Norton's impedance or Thaminian's impedance also right so what is the final circuit I'll be having a Norton current the Norton current I got 1.6 amperes in parallel to that I have to represent 
a Norton's resistance or a Norton impedance that is 33.33 ohms. In parallel to this, you will be having a load impedance of 50 ohms. Load impedance of 50 ohms. Right? So, what is the load current IL? IL is given by total current that is 1.6 multiplied by the resistance of the other branch that is 33.33 divided by what is the total resistance that is involved that is 50 plus 33.33. So, you will be getting the load current right over here. Able to follow? Now, you got not an equivalent circuit. So, with the help of not an equivalent circuit, how I can write the Thevenin equivalent circuit is my question. So, you will be having a Thevenin's voltage that is VTH. In series to that, you will be having a Thevenin's impedance. This Thevenin's impedance is same as not an impedance which is, which seems to be 33.33 and you will be having a load resistance. That load resistance, I am going to write over here. So, what is the value? 50 ohms. Now, my question is, what is Thevenin's voltage is my question. The Thevenin's voltage is 1.6 times of 33.33. So, 1.6 times of 33.33. Able to follow? Which is 160 divided by 3 volts. Go through my previous video. I have solved using Thevenin's theorem. I got the same result. So, solve using Norton's theorem or Thevenin's theorem. You should get the correct answer. Make sure you are going to preserve accuracy and you are going to save the time also. Third case in this, the circuit consists of only dependent sources. So, at time t equals to infinity, at time t equals to infinity, your Norton's current equals to 0 because there is no any active element. So, no need to find Norton's current. Straight away, you have to find the Norton's impedance that is Rn or Zn. You, you need to find Norton's resistance or Norton impedance. In order to find Norton resistance, what you have to do is, you have to inject a test circuit or you have to provide a test circuit. So, the test circuit can be a voltage source or current source. The test circuit can be a voltage source or a current source. So, if I am treating my voltage as 1 volt, I have to calculate what is this short circuit current. If I am injecting 1 ampere, I have to find what is the voltage drop across this 1 ampere current. Able to follow? Next. Let me assume the voltage value to be 1 volt. So, let me apply nodal analysis. This terminal, I am going to call it as Vx. And the 3 currents are flowing outwards. So, what is this current? This current is Vx minus 10 times of I naught divided by 4 plus Vx divided by 2 plus this current is Vx minus 1 divided by 1 which is equals to 0. So, I will be getting, so I will be getting Vx minus 10 times of I naught plus let me take an LCM 2 times of Vx plus 4 times of Vx minus 4 which is equals to 0. So, what is the value of I naught is my question. I naught equals to voltage divided by resistance, voltage divided by resistance. So, let me replace over there. So, I will be getting Vx divided by 2 plus 2 Vx and plus 4 Vx will be plus 6 Vx minus 4 which is equals to 0, which is equals to 0. So, Vx minus 5 Vx will be minus 4 Vx minus 4 and plus 6 will be plus 2 Vx which is equals to 4, which is equals to 4. Thereby, I will be getting Vx equals to 2 volts. Thereby, I will be getting Vx equals to 2 volts. Right? So, Vx equals to 2 volts. Next, I have to find what is the current that is flowing through this 1 volt battery. So, the current is flowing actually in this direction because Vx equals to 2 volts. But what is the current I have to find? I have to find the current which is flowing upwards. So, let me denote this current as Is. Right? So, Is is opposite of the current that is flowing over here. Let me denote this current as Iz. So, opposite of Iz. How Iz is expressed? Iz is expressed as Vx minus 1 divided by resistance is 1. So, I will be getting minus 1 ampere. Minus 1 ampere. How you can find not an impedance is 
what is the test voltage you applied that is 1 divided by what is the current you are getting minus 1 it is not having any meaning if I am telling the resistance is negative in the case of passive circuit so you have to take the modulus of current so I will be getting what, what is the value of Zn I will be getting I will be getting it as 1 ohms I will be getting Zn equals to 1 ohms able to follow before discussing the limitations of Norton theorem let us discuss what is the difference between Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem. Able to follow? What is the first step in order to solve Thevenin's theorem? The load what they have given should be replaced by a open circuit and you have to calculate open circuit voltage and that open circuit voltage you are going to call it as VOC or Thevenin's voltage that is VTH. But in the case of Norton's theorem what you are going to do is the load impedance or the load resistance you are going to replace by your short circuit you will not be finding the voltage you will be finding the current that current is called as Norton's current and what is the step 2 you are going to find Norton impedance or Thevenin's impedance this Norton impedance and Thevenin's impedance will be the same make sure you will be having only independent sources or you will be having a mixture of both independent and dependent sources or you will be having only dependent sources based on that you have to find the value of ZTH or ZN. The third step is you have to replace the final circuit. Your final circuit will be VTH in series to that you will be having ZTH in series to the, this you will be having ZN. But in the case of Norton's you will be having a Norton current let me call it as IN. In parallel to this, you will be having ZTH. In parallel to this, you will be having ZN. As I discussed, ZTH equals to ZN. Able to follow? So I can tell Norton's theorem circuit and Thevenin's theorem circuit are dual to each other. Whichever method is comfortable for you, follow the method. Both methods are very, very important, especially if you are preparing for exams like GATE and ESC then case 2 and case 3 is very very important but if you are preparing for exams like NET and set no case 1 is important right now let us discuss the limitations of Norton's theorem Norton's theorem is not applicable for unilateral network example diode so if the circuit if the static part is having a diode then this network, this theorem is not applicable the second disadvantage is there should not be any magnetic coupling between the load and the circuit nothing but loading should not take place so these are the two limitations of Norton's theorem. So in this video I have discussed about the Norton's theorem. In the previous video I have discussed about Thevenin's theorem. I am telling the Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorems are dual to each other. In the next video let us discuss about maximum power transfer theorem and superposition theorem. Thank you for being on my channel. Please like the video, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel Training Gyan. All the best for your competitive exams. Thank you.